I don't need to be on Twitter. Okay. 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 So good morning. Happy Sunday. I'm Patty Bogue. This is uh, Vinyasa Flow, Slow Flow, um, with a focus on uh, quads and um, hips today. And we're going to up it a little bit more than I normally do. Um, so just do what you can. Um, no worries. So, hey, Amy. So everybody mute if you can. Just mute your... Um, yeah. How do I get you big and lose everyone else? Um, I think it's the little... Uh, um, the three things. There's a bunch of squares over in the left-hand corner. Do you see it? And then Jillian, if you just mute yours, that would be great. And Diane, yours. Yeah, there we go. Okay, perfect. Okay, so starting against the wall, you're gonna have your back up against the wall and come right into Baddha Konasana. So feet are together. And you can just grab onto your um, ankles for a minute and really pull your spine long and then lean back against the wall. And if this is, if you feel like your, um, your uh, um, tailbone is kind of tucked too much, put a towel or something like that underneath your hips to really lift up. And then just lean back, close your eyes. So kudos to you guys for um, rolling out of bed this morning on this rainy, gray North Carolina day. And my theme today is tapas. And tapas is a Sanskrit word that means discipline and fire. And so just to get on the mat this morning, I'm sure required a little bit of fire on your part. So uh, hats off to you. And then just lean back, grow tall, and just feel the inner groin start to relax, start to soften. We're going to focus on um, equal part breath today. So inhale, count one, two, three, four. Exhale, one, two, three, four. And then as we progress through the class, hopefully you can make that longer and longer. So inhale, one, two, three, four. Exhale, one, two, three, four. And then just grab your block or your book. And we're gonna put the narrowest width right between your feet. So it's just spreading the feet a little wider. You can have your hands on your ankles if you want. Keep the shoulders fastened onto the wall. Head should lean back. So when I do this pose, it, um, I notice how much I keep my head forward because leaning the head back sometimes doesn't feel normal to me. So feel the inner groin start to open a little bit more here. Come back to that breath. So our intention is to be strong and calm. So the breath, even though we're fired up, with intention of whatever we want it to accomplish. Um, you balance it with the breath so you're staying calm, the mind is calm, so that you respond rather than react. And then if that's, if you think you can go a little further, we're gonna turn the block to a little wider uh, spot on the block. Just making a little more fire in the inner groin. Keep coming back to the breath. Inhale, 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 inhale. Exhale, 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 exhale. Try to do it all in and out through the nose. 
So this might be enough for your inner groins. You think you can go a little further, take it to the widest spot in the block. Lean back, spine is long, kind of lighting up the inner groins with some fire, which will help open our hips. Good, one more breath. Good, and then slide the block out and then bring your feet back together and just notice how much further your knees um, are lowered now to the floor. Hopefully um, your inner groins are a lot more open. And then we're just going to um, come up to standing and then put your hips on the wall. So I've got my little wall behind here. So hips to the wall, grab your elbows and just hang. So feet are about a foot and a half away from the wall. Really let your sit bones anchor to the wall and then think of from your tailbone to the crown of the head getting really long. Kind of reach the elbows towards the floor. And then reach the fingertips forward and maybe start to slowly straighten one leg, pushing the sit bone into the wall and then the other leg straighten it a little bit. We're just starting to warm up the hamstrings a bit. So just kind of pulse back and forth a few times. Good. And then lift the hips away from the wall and let's roll up one vertebrae at a time. Sweep the arms wide and high, stretch up to the sky. Good, exhale, hands back in front of the heart. Take a big inhale, exhale and release the hands. Good, so let's take your right shoulder, right side of the body to the uh, wall. We're gonna inhale your right arm up to the sky and then walk it back and place your hand on the wall so your thumb is pointing up, your right thumb is pointing up. Now bend your knees slightly and think of the whole right shoulder, right hip pulling forward. You should feel this in the shoulder. So notice what's happening to your head. Keep your uh, chin level with the floor. And to go even a little deeper, keep the knees bent and then just start to little, little walks of your feet towards the center of the room. And then pull that right shoulder forward, the right hip forward. Feel that nice stretch through the shoulder. Good, and then slowly walk the feet back. Inhale the right hand up to the sky and then exhale it back down to the floor and let's switch sides. Kind of notice the difference between your right shoulder and your left shoulder. <coughs> and then left shoulders against the wall, inhale your left hand up, exhale it back, thumb points up, press your arm, uh, not so much your whole arm, but your hand into the floor, slight bend of the knees, and then pull your left shoulder forward, pull your left hip forward. Chin is in neutral, belly strong. Feel that nice stretch. So if you're sitting at the computer a lot, this is a great one when you stand up. Just go to a wall or you can do it in a, a door, door frame, just grabbing onto the door frame. So now a little bend in the knees. Let's walk our feet, little mini walks to the center of the room, just your feet. And now pull your left hip forward. Pull your left shoulder forward. Feel that nice deep stretch. Good, and then walk the feet back. Inhale the hand up to the sky, and then exhale and release it. Kind of shake it out, and then let's come to the top of your mat. We're gonna use the wall again later, but for now, let's just come to the top of the mat, standing in mountain. Good, take a big inhale. Exhale, release the hands, inhale, rise up, 
exhale forward fold let's just hang out here a minute bend the knees and wiggle the hips around shake the head yes and no roll the shoulders good inhale look and lengthen good exhale and drop the head good inhale lengthen the spine pull the belly button in exhale and fold good push down through the feet lift the chin let's rise all the way back up stretch up to the sky exhale hands back to the heart take a big inhale exhale and release inhale rise up exhale forward fold good inhale look and lengthen exhale let's step the right leg back drop the knee Good, hands come up to the left knee. Now push down, lift the chest up and just let your hips slide forward. So we're getting a nice uh, stretch through the right hip flexor. So lift the heart up. Good, inhale, intention, drive, discipline. Exhale, staying calm and grounded while you do it. Good, now push down with the hands and we're just gonna slide the hips back so that the front leg is at a 90 degree angle and your other quad is perpendicular to the floor. And now I want you to lengthen the tailbone down towards the floor. You should feel a nice quad stretch here. Spine is still long, think of a helium balloon on the crown of your head, draw the tailbone down. Should go a little more into the quad. Good, and then come back into um, a deeper fold. We're gonna bring the hands on the inside, coming into lizard. Good, drop the elbows if you want. Maybe stretch your left arm straight. Just kind of wiggle around a little bit. Getting nice and juicy into the hips. So without intention or drive, we cannot do the hard things. So our intention is to stay strong, disciplined, but calm. Good, last breath here. Good, and then walk the hands back up. Let's straighten the front leg, wiggle your front forward foot forward a little bit and then draw the toes back. On the inhale, lift the heart, pull the belly button in, exhale and fold over the leg. Inhale, be strong. Exhale, be calm. Balancing the two. Good, let your left foot just um, tip over to the side. So we're getting a different part of the hamstring Keep lengthening the, the crown of the head forward so the spine stays nice and long. Good, toes come back up, plant the foot, step forward, Uttanasana. Good, inhale, look and lengthen, exhale and lower. Push down through the feet, lift the chin, let's rise all the way up, stretch nice and long. Exhale, forward fold. Good, inhale, halfway lift. Plant the hands, step the left leg back. Good, hands come up to the right knee. Push down with the feet, push down with the hands, lift the heart up. Shoulders squeeze together on the back and then draw the tailbone under just slightly and let the hips come forward. So you should feel this a little bit more in the hip flexor. You're still gonna feel it a little bit in the quad. Good, and then slide the hips back. Maybe step your front foot back. You've got the, the um, square here. Left leg is straight. Now draw the tailbone down. Lengthen the tailbone and feel that stretch through the quad. Try to keep the spine long. Good. Keep tucking the tailbone under. Good. And then slide forward again. Plant the hands. Maybe wiggle your back foot away a little bit coming into lizard. So dropping down with the elbows. You can drop the elbows to the block. 
maybe take the right hand forward. And just wiggle it around. So keep your mind focused on the breath. Every time you notice your mind wandering out of the room, just gently drop back and just count your breaths. Inhale, one, two, three, four. Exhale, one, two, three, four. Good, and then push the arm straight. Let's straighten the front leg, maybe wiggle it forward a little bit and then draw the toes back. See if you can spread the toes. Really create space between every single toe. Pull your belly button in, lift the heart up, and then fold. Keep tacking the right hip back. Good spine reaches forward. Go ahead and let the toes just fall out to the side. Good, and then plant your right foot, step forward, Uttanasana. Good, hands to the shins, inhale, lengthen the spine, exhale and fold. Good, inhale, halfway lift, exhale and fold. Push down through the feet, lift the chin, rise, come all the way up, stretch up to the sky, exhale, hands to the heart, legs are strong with discipline, Good, face is soft and calm. Take a big inhale, exhale, release. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, look and lengthen, let's step back. Good, into plank. So this is a little different from what we normally do. We're gonna drop our right elbow, left elbow, push up with the right hand, left hand, and then switch. So left elbow, right elbow, left hand, right hand, and then hips lift back, down dog. And just pedal out your feet a little bit here. Good, inhale, come forward. You can drop knees, chest, chin, or lower down, chaturanga, cobra, or up dog, and then come back into down dog. Good, step your left foot part way in, inhale the right leg up to the sky and just hip height, small little pulses up. You should feel this in the left hamstring. And now bend your knee, open up your hip. Kick the heel away. Good, stretch the leg straight, sweep the right foot all the way up between the hands, root down through the feet, rise up. Crescent Warrior. So try to get this front leg at a 90 degree angle, but then start to lengthen the tailbone down towards the floor. So you're really getting into the quad and the hip again. Just gonna do a little shoulder opener here. So arms go out to the side. Let's bring the left arm under the right, and then Eagle Arms, Garudasana. So now uh, lift the elbows up a little bit, and now squeeze the elbows together. Squeeze the hands together. Feel that nice stretch through the shoulders. Good, one more breath. Good, release the hands. Slowly step back, lower down, chaturanga or knees, chest, chin, cobra or up dog, and back into down dog. How's everybody doing? Okay. Good, step the right foot part way in, lift the left leg, just hip height, small little pulses up and down. Bend the knee, open up the hip. So keep your top foot flexed and kick through the heel. You should feel a little pinch in your glute when you do that. Good, straighten the leg, level out the hips, sweep the left foot forward, plant it down. Now really get heavy in the feet. Use your abs to lift you up. 
Good, sweep the arms up, crescent warrior. See if you can dive your front knee a little deeper, keep that back thigh lifting up and then lengthen the tailbone towards the floor. Good, arms go out to the side, right arm on the bottom, left arm on top, eagle. Good, one more breath. Good, release the hands back down to the floor. Step back into plank, hold plank. We're just gonna tap our shoulder, tap, tap. Try not to move the torso so much, tap, 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 tap. And then just push forward slightly, lower down, chaturanga, cobra or up dog and back into down dog. Everybody take a big breath in through your nose and then sigh it out through your mouth. <sighs> big breath in through the nose, sigh it out through the mouth. <sighs> Last one, big breath in, sigh it out. <sighs> Good, set the left foot in part way, lift the right leg up. Good, nose to knee cheetah. So round to the back, squeeze, stretch back three point. Good, round the back, squeeze, stretch back three point. Last one, hold it here, squeeze. Now step forward, pivot the back heel in and down, warrior one. So hips are squared forward. Try to bring that front knee at a 90 degree angle. We're gonna open the arms out to the side and then re release the hands behind you, clasping them, open up the chest. So belly stays nice and strong. So you can stay here or you can fold forward, bringing the chest on the inside of the front leg. So you decide, you can just stay lifted, opening up the chest or fold forward. Good, one more breath. Keep the spine nice and long, the gaze is straight down. Good, now bring the right hand on the inside of the right foot, Parjva Kanasana, left hand reaches up to the sky. So lean your right shoulder into your knee and then push the knee back into the shoulder, really fire up. And you can feel that in the hips. Take your top hand, flip it towards the front of your mat. Stretch your arm over your head. Now push into the back foot. You're feeling that um, left inner arch lifting and then really reach your top arm nice and long. Good, one more breath here. Keep tucking the right butt cheek under. Good, now look down at the floor. We're gonna slowly start to straighten the leg, straighten the arm. You can bring your hand to a block or up onto the shin for triangle pose. So gaze can be down at the floor, straight out to the side or up to the sky. Good, top hand reaches over the head and think of your, your um, I, I got this cue from a teacher. It's like the top arm, you're holding a um, uh, water skiing rope and it's pulling you. So really stretch long. Good, and then bend the front leg. Plant the hand, step back into plank, lower down chaturanga, cobra or up dog, or just skip all of that and just meet us in down dog. So just notice already the tapas, the heat, kind of firing up your body. I can feel I've got a little bit of a sweat going already. Good, left leg lifts high. Good, nose to knee cheetah, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Stretch back three point, nose to knee, squeeze. Stretch back three point, nose to knee. Now hold it here, plant the foot, pivot the back heel in and down, warrior one. So dive the front leg forward. Good, draw the tailbone under, push into the outer edge of that back foot. So you feel the back uh, right arch lifting a little bit. As soon as that back arch lifts, you should feel this engage all the way up the inner groin. So no jiggly inner thighs for you. 
and then lift up. Good, arms come behind. Now switch the place of your hand. Your dominant hand will always want to go on top. Switch it and then stretch and open up the chest. Good, and you can stay here. If this feels good, you're getting lots of shoulder opener. Stay here if you want to fold forward, fold forward. Let the arms come up to the sky. The gaze is straight down. Don't let your um, left butt cheek kind of sway out to the side. Tuck the left butt cheek under. Spine stays nice and long. Good, now bring the left hand on the inside of the foot. Right arm lifts to the sky, Parjva Konasana. And so we can go into the pose and kind of half ass do it, right? You wanna really be engaged. So dive that front knee a little deeper, push your shoulder into the knee, push the knee back into the shoulder, push the back leg straight, reach the arms away from each other. Good, really be here, be present and disciplined. And then take the top arm, flip it, stretch the arm over your head. And think of from your right foot, all the way up the side of the body, out the fingers, create length. Good, now slowly start to straighten the top arm, straighten the leg, coming right into triangle pose. So the gaze can be down if you feel like you're not balanced or if this is really tricky for you, keep the gaze down. Good, now make the legs strong, lift up both kneecaps, stretch the arms away from each other. Good, squeeze the shoulder blades together on the back. Good, one more breath. Good, exhale, top hand back down to the floor, step back into plank. Good, now hold plank here. Good, see if you can come just to the right fingertips. And maybe you just stay here, keep lifting and lowering. Try not to, I just noticed I swayed my hips over to the left. Keep the belly strong, tuck the tailbone under. Maybe see if you can lift your right arm forward. Maybe can you lift your left toes up and balance. Good, let's switch sides. So left fingertips, maybe just stay there. Maybe lift the left leg up and down. See if you can reach the left arm forward, right leg back. Good, and then knees, chest, chin, or chaturanga, cobra, or up dog, and back into down dog. Okay. All right, we're pretty warmed up now, hopefully. Good, let's walk the hands back to the feet, pivot the toes out to the side, drop the hips. So garland pose, malasana. We'll just stay here for a sec. So hopefully already I can tell my hips are, are a bit more open. Hopefully you feel that too. Okay, the next couple poses are gonna be at the wall again. So drop the hands, drop the head, lift the hips, heel toe the feet, and then just slowly roll up. So find your wall again. And then I like a cushion under my knee. So this is, a, this is to me, one of the deepest quad openers that uh, there is in yoga. Um, and it's a great one to prepare for. We're gonna uh, have our final pose um, as a version of pigeon. So we really want our quads open. So take your right knee onto a cushion and then bring the right knee as close to the wall as you can. Your feet are going up the wall. And um, if you've got lots of red nail polish, you might not want to click your feet into the wall quite as deep or just be really careful that your nail polish from your toes doesn't go on the wall. And then stay, step your left leg into a lunge and then walk the hands up. So for some of you, you might not be able to get up. Some of you, this is gonna be deep, just bringing the hips back towards the wall just stay here with your fingers on the floor. Next level up, next time you practice, maybe you can bring your hands up to your knees. Sorry, your left knee. 
And then the goal is to try to start to bring the body back towards the wall. See if you can lengthen the tailbone under and yowza, that should really be getting into the quads. If you're a runner, uh, this is a great one to do after you go for a nice long run. So keep lengthening the tailbone down towards the floor. More advanced, if your quad is, quads are pretty open, you can maybe bring your hands to the wall behind you and really lean the torso back. But that's, uh, that's a whole another level up. Okay, one more breath here. So notice if your shoulders are tensing. Notice if you're clenching your jaw. So we want that tapas, we want that discipline, that drive, but we, we want it with a calm state. <laughs> So our mind is clear. So just take a few breaths here. Inhale, one, two, three, four. Exhale, one, two, three, four. And then let's switch legs. So come on out. Oh, good. And maybe just stand up for a sec. Can you tell the difference between your right quad and your left? Just kind of shake it out. To me, I can really feel, it just feels more alive, my right leg. All right, let's switch sides. So take your cushion, your towel or your block, and then bring the left knee onto that. And then bring the knee as close to the wall as you can. And your, um, your heel can be kind of pressing just to the outside edge of your booty. See if you can spread your toes. And then maybe you stay here and maybe one side was really open, the other side is not. So. You've got to tune in and listen to your body to determine what is the best, right? You've got to balance that tapas with knowledge. Good. And then bring your hands up to your right thigh. And you may be leaning forward here. That's okay. See if you can keep drawing the tailbone under a little bit and then lean back. And you want to do this mindfully. Any tweakiness in your knee, I would come out and just lay on your side and open your quad from the floor. Yeah, any knee issues, uh, or just talk to me after class and I can give you some other quad openers. Good, keep lengthening the tailbone down to the floor. See if you can start leaning back just a little bit. Scan your body. So typically when we are, you know, we're warriors and we're going into battle, right? We've got that tapa is really on high gear, but notice what happens to the rest of your body. You'll be clenching your teeth, furrowing your brow, but typically day to day, we are not going to war. <laughs> so notice when you have that tapa, when you have that drive, I know Jillian's a big tennis player. Like notice what's going on with the rest of the body. You may be grinding the heck out of your teeth, right? And not really aware of it. So just keep scanning. So this is a pretty intense pose. Scan your body. What are your triggers? I know for me, I do clench my jaw. So scan, or maybe you scrunch up your shoulders. So keep, keep noticing. Good, one more breath here. and then slowly come out. Oh. And then we're going to go to down dog at the wall. So hands come to the floor and then just bring your heels right to the edge where the floor meets the wall and then press back. So just that little bit of foundation of the wall might take you a little deeper into down dog. Now we're going to try down dog splits at the wall. So you decide how, how deep you wanna go. You may just wanna stay at down dog um, with your both feet staying on the floor. Otherwise, we're gonna lift our right leg up the wall and curl our right toes under. We curl our toes under because that helps square the hips and then push the floor away and see if you can bring your body a little closer to the wall. And so this might be enough. Your hamstring is kind of screaming at you. Hug the muscle into the bone. Move your chest towards your thigh. 
Maybe you want to walk your hands in a little bit. When I teach kids yoga, this pose, I say, kiss your knee. See if you can kiss your knee or at least blow your knee a kiss. Good, and then come out, walk the hands back. Good, and then let's just sit for a moment. Take your hands and just palms face out. Make a little chicken or a bird. So your palms are facing out and you're just giving those wrists a little bit of a, a release. Everybody okay? All right, let's try the other side. So hands down, left leg lifts. So we're at down dog at the wall and then lift the left leg up. Curl the toes under to square the hips. And maybe you stay here. I've got some hamstring things going on my right leg. So I might not go as deep on this side. So really tune in and listen to your body. Good, one more breath. Fire up that tapa, the discipline, balancing with a calm state of mind. Good, and release. Great, let's meet in down dog on the mat. So hopefully everybody's quads are nice and open now. Good, just notice how your down dog feels now compared to when we first started. I can tell my, my legs are way more open. So step your left foot in a little bit towards the right, lift the right leg up high, and then bring it forward for pigeon. Right knee to right wrist. So if this is, um, doesn't work for your knees or whatever, lay on your back and cross your right ankle over the left knee like this keeping the feet flex. Otherwise, come into pigeon. Let's lift the chest up. Good, and then fold forward. So I remember when my daughters were in high school and you know it was always a battle to kind of get them to study, especially doing all the, the testing for college. And I remember saying to them, do the hard things now and the rest will be easier. But if you take the easy way now, later it's going to be hard. And I know they've been talking about, you know, people cheating on Zoom with Zoom tests. And I know the teachers are doing all they can do. But again, I say that just helps you in that moment. In the long run, it makes things harder. So surround yourself with people who are going to push you to do and be better. No drama, no negativity, just higher goals and higher motivation. Inhale, tapas, discipline, fire. Exhale, finding calm, strength, serenity. Good, one more breath. Good, and then walk the hands back up. We're gonna take your back leg and swing it all the way around. Now for some of you, I would have the shin stacked one in front of the other. More advanced is fire log, Agni Staba. So you want the shin stacked one on top of each other. The feet are flexed. So if you look down, you see a triangle, and then bring the hands behind you and lift the chest up. Take a deep breath in, exhale it out. Inhale, 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 exhale, exhale, exhale. So you can stay here with the hands behind, lifting the chest up. If you've got the shins one in front of the other rather than one on top, I suggest you fold forward. So think of a string on your heart. Try not to round the back when you fold forward. You wanna lead with the heart. So I always think of a string pulling your heart forward. So you're gonna feel this in the hips and the glutes, right in the hip socket.
to take another big breath in. Exhale. And then just start to walk the hands up and then we're gonna lean back. So I've got my shin stacked one on top of the other. My left foot is on my knee. And then just let the legs get heavy. If you can go all the way back and let the legs get heavy here. It's just gonna take you a little bit deeper. Good, one more big breath. Good, and then press down through the elbows, lift all the way back up. Let's just lift the legs, give them a shake, cross the ankles and just roll forward, plant the hands, step back, down dog. And then let's switch sides. So left leg lifts high, bring it forward for pigeon. Left knee to left wrist, walk the back leg away. So you want the top of the knee facing straight down. Just notice if your knee is angled out to the side and you want to pay attention to your back foot. You don't want the foot sickled. You want it straight. So click every toenail down into the mat that helps anchor and then lift the chest up and fold forward. So have the courage, the discipline, the strength to change what you can. Be the change that you wish to see in your family. Be the change you wish to see in your friendships. Be the change you wish to see in your romantic relationship. Be the change you wish to see in your community. Be the change you wish to see in your job, right? We can do the hard things. Good, last breath. Good, and then walk the hands back up. Take that back leg, swing it all the way around. And either, um, if, if your hips are a bit tight, bring one foot or one shin in front of the other. Otherwise, we're gonna come a little more advanced is um, shins are stacked. Your right foot is on top of your left knee. And you wanna flex the feet and then push down into the baby toe side of both feet and then grow tall. Think of that helium balloon lengthening the spine up to the sky. Maybe you bring your hands behind and then just focus on letting the legs go, letting the legs get heavy. So you can stay here lifted. If that's um, enough of a challenge for you, stay here. Listen to your body. Try not to let the ego uh, weave its way in. Right, if your hips are screaming here, don't fold forward. <laughs> You're gonna hurt yourself. So really tune in and just listen to what your body needs. If this isn't enough, if you could sit here all day, then fold forward. Just up it a little bit. So I would say it's that Goldilocks principle. You don't want too much, you don't want too little, you want just right. And you can do this pose with one shin in front of the other rather than on top and still get that benefit of the stretch in your glutes. Good, and then inhale, lift back up and then let's slowly lay back. And maybe you stay up on your elbows or if you wanna go all the way down, go down and let, let that right knee get heavy. So notice what's happening around the hips, right up at the socket. I can feel some of the tendons getting a little pull. And again, it shouldn't, you should never have a sharp shooting pain in yoga ever, ever. If it's just that dull ache, 
Just kind of breathe and sit with it. And then slowly come to the elbows. Good. And then take that top leg, swing it around, down dog. Oh. Good. Drop down to the knees and let's just do a few cat and calves. So inhale, lift the chest, exhale and round. Really tuck the tailbone. Think of a bar lifting the waistline up. And inhale, lift. Exhale and round. Good. Inhale, lift. Exhale and round. Good. And then spine comes back to neutral. We're going to inhale our right leg up to the sky and then tuck it behind the left knee and then walk your feet away. So this is where a block or your book might come in handy. We're going to roll back and either sit up on your book um, or more advanced, just come right to the floor. So this is Gomukhasana, cow's head pose. It's great for the hips and the glutes. So just sit tall, close your eyes, and just think about what it is in your life right now that you need a little tapas, you need a little discipline. Where do you need that fire lit? But like any fire, right, it can get out of control sometimes. So you've got to look at whatever that is that your, your intention, like I know, you know, you, okay, I need to go on a diet and then you just stop eating, <laughs> right? That isn't, that isn't a good plan. It's not sustainable. So you want that tapas to be balanced with knowledge and calm and groundedness looking at it to see is whatever was working whatever i need does it make sense is it necessary good so let's inhale our right arm up to the sky and then drop the hand behind you take the left hand up to the elbow and just walk your hand down the back a little bit and then lean your head back so for a lot of you i would just stay here if you're really feeling a stretch along the side body the shoulder area stay here more advances take your left hand thumb goes down reach around and either just grab your shirt or see if you can grab the fingers and then lean the head back and then breathe And then just release the hands and then fold forward just for a couple of breaths. <coughs> Good, last breath. Good, and then just push yourself forward back into tabletop. Let's do a cat and cow in between. Inhale, lift up, exhale, and round. Really push the hands into the floor, feel the shoulder blades pull apart, and then spine back into neutral. Lift the left foot up, tuck it behind, walk the feet away, and then sit back on your block or your blanket, and then grow tall. Close your eyes, So be the change using tapas and discipline and fire. So try to let the legs get a little bit heavier. Close your eyes, scan your body. So I've, I've said this before, but our mind likes drama, right? So right now your hips will be screaming a bit. So acknowledge it, but then move your mind. Come back up to your face. Can you relax the spot between your eyebrows? Can you relax the face? Can you let the lower jaw relax away from the upper jaw? 
find balance in the tapas, in the midst of the storm, right? Can you find peace, quiet, strength? Good, and then inhale the left arm up, drop the hand behind, take your right hand up to the elbow and just walk your, your fingers down the back and then lean your head. So maybe you just stay here. I can feel this is a pretty big stretch um, with the side of the body. Maybe take your other hand, bring it around and you can just grab onto your shirt or if you can reach your fingers, grab your fingers and then lean the head back. And so this is a pretty intense pose, right? See if you can soften into it. Find a spot of your body, a spot in your body where you can relax. Right, we balance the tapas with calmness. We're still working hard, but we're doing it from a place of calm, peaceful strength. We're responding rather than reacting. And then release the hands, take a big breath. Think of that helium balloon growing tall and then leading with the heart, fold forward. <clears throat> Come back to the breath. And then slowly come back up. And then let's just come back forward to tabletop, last cat and cow. Inhale, lift up. Exhale and round. Good. Okay, we're almost out of time, but the pinnacle pose is mermaid. So we'll just try it once quickly on each side. So right leg lifts high and then bring it forward for pigeon. <clears throat> so back foot is pressing into the floor, press into both knees and see if you can just bring your hands up. That's level one. So you want to be really pushing into your knees. This is Mula Banda lifting up. So this is level one. Level two is maybe just doing this, lifting the back foot, pressing your right hand into the thigh. And then mermaid is hooking your elbow, reaching the right hand up. And coming into the pose there. Good. And then both stretch back, down dog. Good. So opening the body, creating tapas with discipline and fire. Left leg comes forward for pigeon. Good. And then just practice pushing down so much and lifting up. Think of... Um, like you're trying to hold your pee. So you want to really be pulling up with the perineum. Um, we, we call that Mula Banda. And then, so that's level one. Level two is just trying to lift the back foot. Doing that quad stretch, but your quad should be pretty open here. And then level three is hooking your elbow and then reaching the other hand up, grabbing the hand and then look forward. And then release. Good, take that back leg, swing it around, and let's lower down. So plant your feet, start to round and lower all the way down. And then just hug the knees into the chest, rock side to side. Class always goes too fast. I need more time. And then take the arms out to a T. Bring your knees right on top of your hips and then drop them over to the right. Turn your head to the left. Just let everything relax. So we're balancing that fire with rest and relaxation. Last breath. 
Good. Head comes back to center. Use your abs to pull the knees up and then drop them over to the left. Your gaze goes to the right. Let that right shoulder get heavy. Maybe think of the armpit pulling away from the torso and then just let it get heavy. Come back to the breath. Be the change you wish to see in the world. If you want to make big changes, it's so important to have people around you as cheerleaders, people who have your back. And then head comes back to center. Use your belly to bring your knees back up. Flip your feet to the sky. Happy baby. So drawing the knees down to the floor, maybe rocking side to side, maybe stretching one leg straight, then the other leg straight. So bring the feet together. Interlace your hands. Now pull the feet towards the top of your mat so your arms go straight. Head and shoulders are lifted up and just shrug them. So you're kind of leaning back, pulling the feet forward. And then just give yourself one big hug. Maybe lift the nose up towards the knees. If there's any pose that we didn't get to do today that your body wants to do, go ahead and do it now. Otherwise, we're going to release into Shavasana. So just let both legs go out to the edge of your mat. Arms go out to the side, palms are facing up. Just let your whole body surrender into the earth. Just letting the fire start to cool down. And all that effort and discipline, we relax and restore. We'll take one more deep breath in. Just sigh it out through the mouth. Start to wiggle your fingers and your toes. Stretching your arms up over your head. Hook your thumbs. Just give the whole body a nice, big, long stretch. Good. And then when you're ready, bend the knees. Roll over onto your right side. And just pause there. Just notice how you feel now compared to when you first came in. Reminding yourself as you go through the rest of the day to take your yoga off the mat with you. And just be more present, observing when you light that fire. What is it in, your, in today where you want to light a little fire, have some tapas, discipline, some heat. And using your hands, push yourself all the way up into a sitting position. Just keep your eyes closed, your focus turned inward. I'm going to close class today by ringing the singing bowl three times. Just listen until you can't hear it anymore. Imagine peace, joy, and gratitude showering down upon you.
and then gently bring your hands in front of your heart, bow your head. Om Shanti, 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 peace, 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 namaste. Good, happy Sunday, everybody. Thank you for joining me. So Gina is up next Sunday. Um, if you haven't tried her class before, give her, give her a try. And um, I took Marcel's class on Wednesday night, the foam rolling. Oh my gosh. If you've, if you've never done that foam rolling, um, give it a try. It's, it's something, yeah, it's something crazy. 